This is episode number 476 of WP Water Cooler, free as in piracy. Yo ho, yo ho. I'm Jason Tucker. You can find me over at jasontucker.blog. Hi, I'm Sam Reed, and I don't know if Jason takes out the pre stuff that I do in the show anymore. Uh, at Sam Reed Media on stuff. And you on the hood is it's your boy Jason Cosper back at it again on the world's most influential WordPress podcast. Speaking of those podcasts, you can go find us wherever it is. Great podcast can be found. And you can come hang out with us in our Discord. And I'm Stacey Links are in the description right. below and on the website and all those fun things. Uh, I forgot to say in my intro, because I'm trying to say this, I am the 2024 California Lottery winner. Also. Yeah. Just put Will into being. Happens. Remember, when I started saying world's most influential WordPress podcast, I didn't mean it like this. <laughs> so oh, it yes, I mean it. Oh, you're, you monkey pawed it. Yes. <laughs> we'll say that this means then that you're going to win a scratch off for like $20. <laughs> right. That's not where I was going with that. But thank you. <laughs> That's how the monkey paw oh, works. Uh, I just was like, what should we manifest? And then I was like, oh, wait, I know what we should manifest, you know, but then whatever. Anyway, I'm sure there's other things to manifest. Hey, speaking of money. Money. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Um. Also speaking about like, you know, <clears throat> when one loses well, faith in the system. <laughs> Say, say, should we introduce our guest first? Oh, shoot. <laughs> I'm sure there are people who don't know me, which is fantastic. I just went right into it. Like, it was not even, I just wasn't even thinking about that. I apologize. I'm so sorry. Mika, I'm so glad you're here. It's like you've never left, and uh, we just started our long, ongoing conversation. Um, so I forgot we all are in that conversation. Um, we we text. <laughs> For the people. <laughs> who am I? Uh, I up until last year, I was the WordPress plugin review team. No, like you that's it. Me. I was the team. Uh, the me team. and Otto, mm -hmm. uh, basically. And um, I basically I've reviewed what does it say? Uh, Fifty-seven thousand plugins. Yeah, that, that's the wow. thing that that was sent to me behind my head. I just leave it there for fun. Um, so basically, if you if you submitted a plugin 000. within the last decade, I probably saw it. Mm -hmm. And don't worry because they've all blurred together and I don't remember them. So I will well, not be some. like, I remember some, <laughs> I've been, I, I've been doing an ongoing uh, post every other week about weird plugin drama. And, I love like, it. It's like crazy plug things. Plug in crypt or something. It is plug in sale from the crypt. Yeah. Otto is actually yeah. sending me a list of some other stories he remembered. He's like, write these up too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sanitizing them. So please don't worry. And None of these people are people that like I talk to on a regular basis. Um, most folks probably names, know me best. Names have been changed. Names, names have been changed to protest the guilty. To protect yeah. the not so innocent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, most people know me Love as it. Ipstanu. I got started with WordPress multi-site, did a stint support uh, as the plug, or excuse me, the forum team's rep, moved on to plugins. Uh, I worked at Dreamhouse for a long time. Now I work at XWP building sites and having a lot of fun there. I loved working there. And awesome. uh, now I'm just sort of chilling and being kind of a general troll to people. <laughs> <laughs> You're, I would say it's more like a wise sage on a mountain. Yeah, just sitting so there like, drinking my, my like, whiskey like, going, nah, man, <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like um, have you considered not caring about that? <laughs> I wish I could not care. That'd be so much easier. I still care. Oh, I mean, that's like your sage advice on the mountain. Not, yeah. you know, not, maybe the sage doesn't always follow their sage advice. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> but they know what the best advice would be. Yes. They just, following Don't it, steal. knowing it. Those are that's the best things. advice. Hey, so can I segue <laughs> that? Because I think stealing? I can that one. Okay. Yes. So knowing uh, that in theory, right, pi piracy hurts people who create things. Hear me out. Maybe that's just a capitalist uh, like cog to stop us from going further. Um, no, I don't want to get too deep into the whole like, you know, well, I mean, we might, but um, back in the day, how this came up was uh, I, I was thinking about back in the day, how I used to try out software, honestly. 
right? Like I would go and, and how I would search for it. I would like search files. Like you would like download files off the internet, you know? And trust them, folks. Don't do and that. And trust them, yeah. So, well, that's, that's, that's actually where this went. So I was thinking about that because there's this plugin called User Role Editor. Hmm, yeah. it's, it's a Russian uh, made, someone, the person who makes it is Russian, yeah. lives in Russia, which is a uh, sanctioned country from the United States where I live. Um, and uh, I have in the past, I, in the past I had user role editor pro, like the paid version. And then they stopped being able to accept my client. I, I always have my clients buy their licenses because I don't want to. That's deal with smart. Them their problem. Yeah. My favorite thing. I'm like, I don't care. The upcharge is not worth any of the things. You pay for the license, not my own. Um, then they can leave with all their stuff if they ever want to. Uh, so I uh, they I was using that plugin for a client site. Now they cannot renew their license. Uh, the, the process is like for a while it wasn't like you can't accept payments and you have to go like, send this weird thing. Um, it, it wasn't like PayPal based. Now you can go there. I, had to, I went to investigating it. I was like, you figured this out? Is there a payment process? You have to go and do a Stripe payment. And then a few hours later or whatever, you will get the, you know, do a Stripe payment to request a link. Yeah. And then pay off the link. And then it says, you know, after a few hours, you'll get sent your download. And I'm like, this is so janky. <laughs> this I, is I feel for them because there are a lot of innocent people trapped in a, terrible situation. I mean, hi, we're in the yeah. United States. We should be familiar with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I hadn't even too. thought about, uh, I hadn't even yeah. thought about the the folks in sanctioned countries that are mm -hmm. like, I just want to make a cool plugin and sell it and like live. I mean, I think that would be what a great business. I mean, it's a good plugin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was really straightforward, you know, not not with all everything tries to be everything else you know I mean, everything is like always like spreading into now i'm doing like all these other things and this was just like roles and capabilities and you're good okay that's I all love it was it's so nice um but now um so so i was like okay i do i want i'm not doing my client's not doing this i'm not like hey get this link and do payment yeah <laughs> i already have to talk these people out of um you know they send me emails like is this spam Yes, 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 it is. <laughs> Look at so you funny. working in IT. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's like part web developer, part counselor is literally my job in my mm -hmm. part tech tech counselor. It's really what I should be, just a tech counselor. Um, so I'm like, hold on, I'm going to write that down. Tech counseling. That's what be. Um, so now I'm like, okay, maybe I'll do this. I'll buy the plugin for them, like whatever. And I yeah. was like, I don't even want to put my freaking... I don't even want to put my freaking code in here. Like, I don't want them to do it. But like, even though I know the developer, I'm just sending. Where, what, what's happening? You yeah, also you like, have no idea what's. I, I work no for idea bank what's folks. Happening. What's the link? Stuff's getting scanned. Your information is going into a database of someone who did a workaround to pay Russia. I work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I was like, do I really want to do like an? Do I want? To? I don't even know what's happening. Is this a shell corporation? Is like <laughs> right. it basically is. I mean, you basically have questions. to make a shell corporation so that you're not buying the software directly from them. See, I did work in, in a bank for IT folks. I do know how all this works. I even know how to launder money, or rather, how to catch <laughs> well, someone laundering money. I was doing. <laughs> no, I was but like, effectively, I really effectively, what you were doing is money laundering for them, which is ridiculous because you're not actually doing that. But that's the methodology it becomes. Yeah, right? Yeah. So and, and I felt really sketch, but the plugin is out, out of date and it's a active site with yeah. um, like, so I could do like a whole staging thing, but I was like, I really just need to get this plugin up to date so I can do a better switch over between, yeah. because I don't, I don't even, I'd have to really like literally start to go through the files mm -hmm. to make sure that the stuff is going to, you know, just that it's all going to correspond. So if, if I were to switch over to another like user role thing, plus that's really involved with a lot of users. Like, yeah, there's like active profiles and all this stuff. So mm -hmm. I really just would rather prefer to use this just baked in. Uh, anyway, so I was like, hmm, how did I used to get files? And a friend of mine had been asking me for some. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I have a lot me. left for my vacation. Sorry. <laughs> yes, I'm busy. You can just ship it, ship it out. 
Um, I I had a friend who had been asking me, like, do you have any licenses, you know, available I could, you know, use for whatever. So I'd kind of been thinking about that. I was like, how do I send this file? <laughs> like to a friend, am I sending a zip file? And then so it's just been on There's my mind. XKCD it was a really long that, intro <laughs> to explain that. <laughs> Surprise. I talked for a long time. Okay, but the the point is is that this was on my mind. And mm-hmm. so I was like, you know, there are those Nold plugin shop. Hmm came into mind. I was like thinking about it and I went to some of the things and I'm like, hmm. And I'm just like, hmm. And that's basically where I was like, you know what? You know who has opinions on plugins and 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 theft (laughs) and things like that? Mika (laughs) does. Mika, do a diff for us. Tell us what changed. Yeah, I I uh I wanted to (laughs) have a plugin that I I have an app called called Delta Walker that I actually use to look at two plugins side by side and tell you exactly what changed. (laughs) And I had that I've had that for years because Otto knows this one because people would say, Oh, so and so copied my plugin exactly, and it's a pay for plugin. I'm like, Okay, send us a copy of it. We promise we'll not keep it. And then I would do the diff and say, Okay, yep, nope, they absolutely copied your code, which is stealing when we're back to the topic. See? Mm hmm. I say this and people hate me. I say, yes, you can absolutely steal open source, but see, there's well, piracy and there's piracy. Say. So I was. I was <laughs> delving into this little and I was like GPL you know I've I've touched on this I know so I just want to explain because I asked some friends and they're like I don't know what that is and I was like wow we really haven't ever like we don't really talk about this right we used to back in the day like share like I had a bunch of like you know my friends actually I guess just one friend probably (laughs) you know you have always one friend and then you have your online friends but like that would share like what was the what Mm -hmm. was the downloader thing Uh, where you like you have a stack Lime of like tiles or for music. Oh, torrent, yeah. torrent. Napster. <laughs> yeah. Napster did that too. Napster. We're yeah. just gonna oh, out ourselves with all sorts of stuff here. Yeah, like- <laughs> I still use torrents. Torrents are a fantastic but way to move large files in small bites. It it's like- also a fantastic yeah. way to do very many, very many illegal things. So please watch out and use a VPN. But you had so like you would download from a specific user, yep. and if they were like offline or whatever, you would have to oh, wait until they got back online. That's early get... Napster. Is that was that early yeah. Napster? Is yeah. That okay, so you'd have to wait until they got back online, and then you'd like get the rest of your file. So you'd have like yeah. these files. So I guess that's early file sharing, not even it the was. torrent. Then the yeah. torrent came where you just like go and find the files and download the zip, not from a user, but like from the I don't know where you're downloading it from at that point. You're downloading it from many users. Torrenting yeah. works because, like, let's say uh, Tucker Cosper and I have a copy of this plugin that you want, and you grab the torrent. You'll download it from all three of us, depending on which computer is faster, whose internet is fastest, and so on. But you download bit, it in a little in bit individual of bit. bits, and it's able to reconstruct them. It's like a transporter. Your bit. Yes, right. your bits and bytes. But it's like <laughs> it's like the concept of transporters on Star Trek, where like they. They take your per- your person, they separate you into many millions of little bits, and then they static you back together at the other end. And that's effectively how torrenting works. It's way um, high level. So folks. you're telling me that torrent <laughs> was transporters for files? That's fucking yes, weird. exactly. Yeah. Like Star Trek transporters for files. That's exactly what it is. I love that. I love that visual. That's so awesome. Yeah. You'd be like, get all the little bits together. Anyway, you know, then whatever, Metallica came along. <laughs> and was like, right. F you pay us. Well, see, okay, but Metallica's point is, you know, you're taking money away from us by by sharing things. And we're like, dude, we used to make mixtapes. What are you talking about? And right. you get into the whole scale situation of like, mm-hmm. were we all breaking the law when we videotaped a movie off of the TV onto our VCR and gave the tape to somebody else who didn't see the movie? Or, and the answer is technically yes. We were I always recorded- breaking the law. When on VHS would record and the little like thing would flip up on the recording. <laughs> and then like, so I watched Mary Poppins that way as a kid and it always ended like right before he went to get fired by the bank people. So that was the end of the movie for me. <laughs> my, my grandpa, uh, back in the day, uh, my folks had cable. My grandparents had cable. My grandpa, uh, had uh, showtime and we had HBO and we oh. would take movies for the other one. Yeah. off of so like i've i've been uh piracy is is a very familiar thing to me you're a pirate uh, of the youth 
<laughs> yeah, I was I was lived born in into piracy. the darkness. But I the thing is, a lot of Even elder millennials that. lived in this space. Like this is an elder millennial space where we were like, it, it didn't. Like, I don't know. I didn't think about it. I don't think at all. And, and I actually covered this beat in college. I did like the tech beat, like a tech column um, for my school paper. I know. And I like covered Napster. It was very cutting edge. Um, but the, like, I didn't, I, I even then, even when Metallica came out with their stuff, like I didn't, and even knowing how it works, I guess I was just like, is it really like the same? Like, and there's like the, the restaurant, there's this, there's people, you know, restaurants play music like stores yeah. play music and there are these mm -hmm. people especially in LA who will actually like do sweeps of areas yep. and come into stores and listen to see if you are playing music that you, that you don't have a like, license for yeah including if you are playing a subscription to yeah. like Sirius or you know some mm -hmm. Spotify even because that's a personal license that yeah. you're not allowed to have that music be listened to commercially which is right. a wild law, but I literally know business owners who have been, I don't know if it's like ticketed, not ticketed, like cited, yeah, fined. Uh, fined. You know, like, what is uh, the, they're like for when, theft, right? For I would, I would, basically. I would argue that they have just been narked on. And no, 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 no. This is same thing that happens with the I, helicopter. I, I when in town, they all text each other. And yeah, talk, like, it's not. It, oh, yeah. It's not about Narcan. It's literally like they will like be like, "Hey, <laughs> the person's coming around." Right, right. <laughs> but no, I'm like that is I'm, literally. I'm arguing. Like, yeah. Well, but that's I'm why arguing. I said there's piracy and there's piracy because, right, like downloading a piece of software for my friends say so that she can test it out and see if this is the plugin she wants to spend money on, is like borrowing a book from the library, in my mm -hmm. opinion, or a friend. Or, or a friend, you know, you or do that all the time. Book. Would you take a book that you didn't pay for, read it and give it back? Yes, I do that every every week from the library. I do it on my e-reader now. Mm -hmm. yes. But I can't keep the book unless I pay a fine. And that's, you know, valid, fine. Okay, but here's the other deal with that. Here are people who have no idea what Blockbuster is. Blockbuster was a place you could go to an actual <laughs> store and take a video cassette, which was a pre-DVD or Blu-ray, and put it in your television at home and watch it. And you could. You have another VCR hooked up and record, <laughs> and record off of it. Record the movie that you watched that had the screen up that said, "This is a violation. Yeah. Do not record this." <laughs> and they still have that on on DVDs. I have some old DVDs from the early '90s that have that, and you can't skip over that. And you can't skip over the ads for other movies in mm -hmm. the beginning. It's really weird. Yep. I think I have an ad for a movie called Doctor Jekyll and Ms Hyde. <laughs> And it's um, on my so, it's on my DVD for Priscilla another, in the desert. Another really good example of this, or interesting, interesting facet of this conversation is, uh, you know, I owned and actually still I still technically own and am op, m doing more with a used bookstore that I had sure. for open for nine years, wherein people who were completed with their books essentially would bring them to me and I sell them for like, you know, a dollar or just give them to me most of the time. Yeah. And then I would resell them for $2 for, well, no, probably more than that. But otherwise, I mean, well, not much more. Hence the reason I closed the bookstore. Yeah. But see, and that's, and, and there are arguments that like, you know, that that's a is also secondary market is what it's called. Yeah. The secondary market is, I mean, but you're assuming these are people who legally bought the movie. So the problem with well, software, though, is that I can do that a thousand times. Right. Right. But can like, I tell you about my vintage really? zip files that I have? Look at these vintage <laughs> zip files that I have. It's a if box a of zip, it's a box yes, of books, literally. That would be great. It's kind of the same thing. It's interesting, yeah. right? Like it, it's the scale where things start to get into a real mess because you know, at its heart. Taking a taking software that you have a plugin, giving it to someone else so that they can use it and see if it's what they want, or even just share it because you know your friend is broke. That's really small potatoes. Where you start yeah. running into trouble with piracy is when you start making these nulled sites, taking plugins that are for sale and then reselling them at a lower price because you're completely undercutting the original mm -hmm. creator. Right. And from a creator standpoint, you know you've put your money and your time into making a plugin you're selling it because you want to make a living and you know you want health care in america and you need money for that great and here's somebody else who who takes it from you and then sells it lower and doesn't kick anything back to you 
Like if a right. reseller was- is that, the key, is that the clincher that doesn't kick anything back? Because what, what if- That's my Here clincher, up. is Here if you're up. not giving anything back. Like if I what had a deal to resell- have an unlimited lifetime license and they're just, I don't know. An unlimited oh, lifetime license. That was a poor license. business well, okay. decision. But this depends- so this is outside of the GPL and I, I have yeah, to- Yeah, we haven't even it. touched the GPL yet. We're literally talking about buying and selling as, a, as well, a, the initial The reason I say this is outside the GPL is that when you buy something, there's usually, besides the license for the software, there is a agreement, a contract that is made when you purchase something, your seller's agreement and your purchaser's agreement. You know, like you may not notice it on most things, but it's like, you know, you can't use this mattress to, to uh, commit genocide. Like they have some weird things on 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 weird riders on I wish things. the mattresses said that. That would be great. Yeah, they should. They should. But like you know how the, how mattresses actually way. say it's it's against the law to remove right, this tag. We just yeah. need to start putting that on every warning. Like the cigarette warnings. Like this yeah. may cause cancer. Also, don't commit genocide. And yeah, then that'd like be great. just like I'm gonna stop. And also stop genocide. Like, right. Just but, start everywhere. We need to remind people because apparently that would be useful. We haven't for we haven't remembered that. So I think we should just introduce. Please that. don't use my plugins to commit Everyone. genocide. Yes. Um. But okay. So stop here we go. Genocide. The okay, GPL sorry. says I can't make that a requirement. The GPL is basically saying you have the access. Once I've given you access to my code, you can mm -hmm. do whatever you want with it as long as you credit me. Hang on to that one, folks. And yeah, I got it. <laughs> as long as you can re-release your updated code. So if you made a genocide version of my Rickroll plugin, and God help you for that. <laughs> what a vision. That is within your legal rights. At the same mm. time. Okay, wait, got... I really want to make one. <laughs> now you want to try to figure that out? Yeah. Not how to commit genocide with Rickrolling, oh. but how to Rickroll people into awareness about genocide. The Rickroll plugin would change all of your YouTube videos to Rickroll. See. Oh, well, I, you can yes. make it change to like other feeds in theory, right? But that, you could, exactly. Oh, and you can change it to your video. code. And I'm making yeah. exactly my code. Which part, when does it become my code? Right. When does it become, that's forking and that's a whole nother drama. <laughs> well, aren't these all just the same? This is a family show, I'm folks. talking about here. Forking is when you take someone else's <laughs> code and you fork that make pie. significant changes to it. You fork and it and release you it. Their bits. I always say you have to make significant changes for something to be a real fork because, and this is where I get into trouble with people and I say, changes. yeah. So if you take, <laughs> if you take my Rickroll plugin and rename it brick roll, and that's the only change you made, uh, Wait, you say what brick. The, what was the second name? Brick, B-R-I-C-K. Brick got it. Yeah. Got it. And then you say written by say read and don't <laughs> mention me at all. You've stolen my code. However, if you make it brick roll, Mm -hmm. and have the video changed to your wow <laughs> i don't know if i did that <laughs> is that a re new reaction from iphone god i don't People, know People, i just need to tell you i know you listen as a podcast but sometimes you just gotta see the visuals it's all there like a cloud of smoke all over us it was fantastic yeah and i was doing air quotes earlier and you know you <laughs> miss those if you're not watching the visual anyway sorry. I, uh, I digress. If, you, if you take my my rick roll plugin and you make yeah. it brick roll and you change the video to be bricks flying at your face and you say by say and mika or and you say leave my, based off of Mika. based off of Mika, yeah. right you have forked my code and the reason i always say significant changes is that basically if i can't tell the difference between your version of the plugin and my version of the plugin other than the names you're done wrong so i should be able to question. look at here's, these two and see difference here's a question this is so Deep. Okay, so, so right. if there's an unlimited license, oh, sorry. Do you want to say something? Yeah, about the that? unlimited I mean, license. I, 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 I do. Say. I'll write my I, notes. I I do uh, want to j just to be clear. Yeah. Um, so uh, saying uh, taking a plugin, uh, giving credit to the original author is like mm -hmm. saying uh, that the title of your plugin is precious based on a novel by Sa uh, Push by Sapphire, right? Yeah. Sure. Like that, that whole title. Oh, or like how they do it in the movies where they're like based off of, you know, whatever book. Right. You, you do that. Well, you do that to protect yourself legally, but right. exactly. in the GPL, you're actually required to do that. Yes. Copyright is a part of the GPL. You have to respect copyright, which means it being additive, you add your own on. For forking specifically. No, for, well, for, for any alterations to code. Well, I mean, okay, so I mean, obviously, the license is literally defines the 
copyright. Mm-hmm. Well, no, the license, it, right? They're separate. They are separate. They are se- copyright and and the GPL are totally separate things. But the GPL states that in order to be compliant with the GPL, you must respect copyright law. Hmm. And what, which is why what I, in the heck is does that mean? respect copyright law? Like, respect. It, it basically bucket. means you have to honor. You have to. The GPL is saying I don't supersede the law. Right. So, and the law applies to everyone equally, folks. Yeah, <laughs> no well, one is just, above the law. Okay. So, all right. So the, the two, then we're talking about these Nold plugins, right? Yeah. So one of them is that uh, I'm going to just, I'm not like trying, everyone's like, don't know. They're the GPL times is who I was looking at. And I think that's a really interesting name, right? And you just join as a member of their site and then yeah. all the members share your, here's all your fun yeah. downloads or whatever. Right. So. But so that's why I I mentioned yeah. the purchasing agreement because by the GPL, yeah, that's actually fair. Um, redistribution is perfectly legit, right? But if you buy it, if you buy something and not the licensing, but your purchase agreement states, I will only use this on thirteen sites, and it's mm-hmm. now being used on three thousand. You've broken your purchasing agreement, and they can come after you. Now, what if it's you have unlimited so much- license? Check the check the list on how unlimited license works. <laughs> Is that like unlimited lot, storage used to be on dot com? <laughs> if that's like unlimited storage, it's like unlimited, unlimited bandwidth. There is a limit, and you will find it. Um, but really, well, I like, think what unlimited says limit is you unlimited. Let's just talk well, about language for a second. It is literally it, well. First of all, that's limited, just it's limited. It's that's not just unlimited marketing like, BS. What? It's marketing BS. Nothing yeah, has ever been unlimited we just said it because it sounded cool um i actually remember when i worked at dreamhouse that it said unlimited and then it had little asterisks and you would read it and says we're not actually unlimited but you know here's how it works it's, it's for all basically unlimited because like well mostly you probably well, won't you know, use it it's like <laughs> if you start going over we'll give you more is what it was at the time and this is like mm-hmm. 10 years ago or eight years ago or something so right. my memory may be yep. off on it but when you buy something that says you know unlimited usage uh for your plugin it may have a little bit of a codicil in there that also says for sites you run or your clients Mm -hmm. and now now i'm I'm like i don't and people don't who reads the service agreements damn terms who reads the terms? Is that but the is thing? Is that those terms you're saying the purchasing agreements that be when you're buying it, not yeah. necessarily the README or the license that's in no. the actual file? Because I'm right. like, well, how do you read the license before you have the file? Those are separate. But see, those are separate things. Like the licensing the purchasing is, agreement is separate from the license. Exactly. And terms. like the the terms yeah. of your purchasing agreement, every site has a privacy policy in terms, and the terms are where you find out things like. Can I get a refund on this plugin if it doesn't do what I want it to do? Right. And some places will say, we don't do refunds because it's software and you can keep it even though we give you the money back. Right. Okay. That's And for the record, I understand that. I hate it, but I totally understand it. Mm-hmm. I think that mm-hmm. everybody should have- uh, Like buying underwear. Yeah. Don't yeah. return your underwear, people, don't please. Don't return your underwear. <laughs> The I mean, that was the whole reason why I would go to a meetup and say, hey, does anyone have a copy Underwear? of blah, blah, blah? Because I want to play around with this for a minute. Like, can you send me send me the yeah. zip file that I can then install on my website, play around with it for a little while? I, I'm not going to spend $400 right. on this piece of software that I just want to play with for a little bit. But that was my way right. of learning this stuff. Just like I yeah. downloaded a pirated copy of Photoshop when I was like 12 years old or whatever and like played with it, you know? I've it's it's the same sort of thing. <laughs> when we use Google Hangouts and we could like pop little pirate hats on and stuff, <laughs> I really wanted you to just like, I wanted to like pop a pirate hat on you right then where you were like saying, oh, I just wanted to, you know, use the software for my friends because technically that is violating the purchase agreement as discussed. So it is. But like, my you know, that's why I said there's piracy and, and there's but piracy. I'm also going to be a potential. I'm also going to be a potential purchaser at some point right. if I do and, like that thing. And that's where I say it's not really piracy. So mm. uh, Corey Doctra, whom I adore, mm. uh, he's just a freaking genius, and he writes amazing books. Gives away most, if not all, of his books for free on his website. Yep. And he asks if you like them, buy one for a library. Oh, that's mm. nice. See, well, he's he's clever. I'm a big he's, proponent of having a book. I love, I love having I, a book. 
I love having a book, but I've really fallen in love with my e-reader because well, just because you can oh, yeah. them differently. But I'm talking about if yeah. a book is something like, for example, you can't lend a friend a book. No, so I can't. can't be like, oh, I love this Corey doctoral book. Here, you take check it out, right? Like yeah. in theory, it should be like you read the book, you like it, then you buy it because you want to have exactly. It. And like and in point of fact, that's what I've done. Right. Uh, I actually own physical copies of his books because I enjoyed them that much. Are you gonna start I have. <laughs> I have little brother somewhere over here. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> I'd hold up the MP3s, but I can't. You know? I mean, <laughs> this is the kind of book I have right by me right now. So, yeah. okay, I love that you're just like literally tossed for within hand reach of you in different places. You have, like, oh yeah, you're like I'm no, having they're... a rough day with this, and you're like I need this. <laughs> you're like no, oh, and over here I've got this. Yeah, stashed on taped under the desk. So. Here's, it's, here's it's the intent of the piracy <laughs> that really is where you start drawing the line. If I'm buying, if I'm giving you a book so that I think I can make a new customer out of you, they, which is effectively what I'm doing when I'm loaning somebody a copy of Good Omen, saying you should check this book out. And when you come back, you're like, I really like this book. Who, who are these people? And Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett are amazing. You should all read Good Omens. It's a fantastic book. Better. So, no, I did not get paid for that how comment I feel about Good Omen. <laughs> Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman together really like. Mm, my, like uh, my, rock, my wife and I still and quote rock. that book. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> There's a difference if I buy the book, make a thousand photocopies, and then give it away. Now right. I'm on the like, or no, not even give it away. You make sell a them copies and sell them for two bucks each. Right, okay. that's called university because those books were way overpriced. <laughs> oh, God. Yes. Yet um, no, now, that wasn't my business now, in university. Now we you are can't also, prove anything. That was sorry. That was back in the day, and then now you can't do that either because yeah. all of the textbooks are all DCIM and digital. So you, they exactly. can't even. They right. have to pay the eighty bucks for their semester's worth of the book, and they don't yeah. even sell but, it back at the end. But even with that, it's the intent. Like if I if I was the person who was photocopying my forensic anthropology textbook and selling it for five bucks for each of my friends, was I doing it to make money or was I doing it to break even on the fact that that book cost me one hundred fifty two dollars? No, I don't still remember the exact price. <laughs> so is it, I'm not still salty about that book. Not still, not still mad about that. The 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 question then is that sort of a protest against the possibly artificially high prices that oh. have been, you know, uh, injected into the university market, let's say. I would say or yes, but it's a very contextual say, argument. In market. What? It's a very contextual argument, but that was my point at the time, was that this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you know, why started. are you charging me $152 for a book that was only this thick, just for the record? Right. And One and was required for our class. And, you know, we all chipped in to buy the book and I made the copies. So effectively, I was paid in advance. But so you were like, I mean, a, we did. Uh, what's that called? Like a uh, rent, rent share, house share? When you do a yeah, we rent shared the book. Yeah, it's like <laughs> but then but see, after a while it got really hectic to share the book among six of us, so we made the copies. Right. Because one of us worked in the print shop and right. it was easy to do that. But at the heart, we were just struggling college students trying to eat dinner and pass a class. Okay, so where's the line between struggling developer just trying to upgrade a plugin that cannot be gotten in some other ways, uh, to fix a problem as sort of a you know, let's call it a, a, a jump fix. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. You know, like upgrade the yeah. stuff to fix the thing. Um, so I, that line, it, right? in this whole situation, I would say, say. Yeah, say. What should say? You be? have the best intentions. <laughs> but. I've already source, seen this person in the past. I know. But the source that you are acquiring the nulled files from mm. is the problem. Let's yes. like if you, for a second, please. if you asked me, hey, Mika, mm -hmm. do you have a copy of this plug in the updated version? I can't download it and my client's out of date and I want to migrate them over. I would say absolutely have a copy because we both paid for it. Wait, wait, hold on. Talk. If anyone does, just please send me a message. Thank you. I, I sadly don't have a copy of that. No one does because no one's buying it for specifically this reason. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a copy of it. Anyway, that. proceed, please. <laughs> but you do? Oh, this will be after after cooler talk, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Live piracy. We just demonstrated it to you. This is well, high well, NSA yeah, people watching the show. Yeah. We're not really. A Look, I'll drive the truck by and it may fall out of the back. All right. Yeah. 
Next time you're down here for your tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> that was worth it. Whoever did that, I love you. The cosplayer because he's the best. That was great. Uh, yeah, for those uh, who are on the podcast, we just showed the FBI warning we used to see for all the <laughs> movies that we've watched on VHS and, and DVD. Yeah. And it's hilarious. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, I uh, will say, um, yes, uh, the people doing this um this null plugin uh business it is dubious it is uh crappy you're still paying somebody money it's you're just paying the the wrong person of course i understand like this yeah. person is uh the the person you're trying to buy the plugin from like you don't want to like move past sanctions and go on a list and everything else what i will what I will argue for instead of uh, paying a nulled plugin firm is uh, you already have this plugin, right? Say like the old yes. version. Yes. Um, uh, <clears throat> okay. What are you, you going to tell me to do here? Is it um, going? Is, does it involve Chat GPT? It does not. It involves okay. uh, searching for the plugin slug on GitHub to see mm. who has accidentally uploaded it to one of their GitHub repositories. Oh my God. Because I have, no, ho, no, ho. I have technically <laughs> trialed a plugin this way. Um, and I, I Yeah, that one's, oh, I know, wow. That's, I, I, would, but, I would argue that taking advantage of someone else's mistake is a different mistake? moral issue than piracy. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> And piracy is like, really a and all of the, the truck was just parked truck. in the middle of the road. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> piracy is really a moral issue on a it lot was, of levels. Yes, it was already. And, and, and I'm, I readily right? agree. I just found a stack. There were zip yeah. files flying out of the back of it as I was driving down no, the freeway. I, you know, I, I can't yeah. say that I haven't done the same thing, Cosper. Um, <laughs> to see, oh, hey, this is how this code works. Uh, there was a company I yeah. looked at that they have like these the coding tests are supposed to take only. Everybody who did the coding test, they fork it from GitHub, and all of their work is public. <laughs> mm -hmm. Could we could we talk a little bit about code, the difference? Like, no, 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 no. Oh, I totally cool. thought this up on my own. Actually, that is could way it... actually more of a real life test than the isolated do it on your own test. Incidentally, so can you search find and find the, the answer? Other Everybody of... Google's folks. Everybody yeah. uses search to find your mm -hmm. answers. Yeah. Whatever could we talk a little it. bit about the difference between like the 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 zip file that you're downloading? the uh the, the license key that you're putting in and mm -hmm. then the subsequent uh support contract that you're oh. getting because of all of this because i think one oh, of the things boy. we're missing in this whole thing is the fact that when you're getting that license that license is essentially allowing you to bother this one person who wrote yeah. this plugin yeah. about the problems that you're having with it when you're someone who <laughs> maybe never problem. emails anyone about problems and you just figure them out yourself um what's the difference there? Like it, uh, if you're trying to figure out how to morally kind of like navigate this whole thing, like are you actually key. using the services that are being provided because of that, um, that license key? Yeah. They're all about updates. All the licenses are focused on updates. Updates. And yeah. Um, I like this. I have a life. I know. I, 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 you know, for <laughs> some software. That Devil's I, advocates that fun. Wait, no, wait, 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 sorry. What, what? I, I have lifetime. Uh, I buy software. I pay for specific WordPress plugins that and themes even that do what I want them to do and what I need them to do. I've purchased lifetime licenses for some, even one that I don't use anymore, uh, Genesis themes. I had a lifetime license that I got. And I was living oh, in gosh. Chicago, so however long ago that was. Um, wow. But I'm of, the, I'm of the mentality of this. The people that are writing this code that I'm going to use have every right to make a living. And they've chosen to make a living off of spending their time and energy writing a theme or a plugin that I desperately need. I could write it myself or I could pay someone else. This is my thought of Facet WP. I could write that code. I don't want love to write that code. Facet WP. I love Facet WP because it works and I don't have to write it. And it's gotten but I could, even in the past. I week. care about the people that wrote the code. And while I have only emailed them for help twice in 13, 12 years, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. I've read their documentation a bunch of times and I've looked at their add-ons on GitHub. That Reading they their documentation with. is true love. <laughs> I always read documentation before That's I send it. That's what's on my video. Valentine's I recommend card. everyone. But I've read your documentation. 
I make use of their resources. In return, I pay them every year. They give me multiple updates. The only time I start getting cagey about updates is when people are like, you have to pay for security updates. Mm. And I'm of the Mm. opinion that if you're releasing a security patch for your plugin, just make it free for everybody who's using it because otherwise it's your name that gets smeared as the insecure plugin. Or, I mean, how would you do that? Say someone has an older version and it- WordPress can do it. Oh, you could- I know I just said that. WordPress.org can do this. They can release can like retroactive security yeah, versions? Yeah, they, like they, they uh, got it. Yeah, they apply the patch retroactively and release versions. So if you're on version 3.5, you can get 3.5.1. If you're on 3.5.11, you get 3.5.12 or whatever the last oh, one okay. is. Got it, got it. And it- you know, like I would say, make mm-hmm. each major release, let it keep updating. Don't add new features, dear God. But if you're applying security patches or little errors that you're fixing, imagine if you were giving all those away for free, people would start looking at you as this person's reliable. This person cares about my site, cares even though I stopped paying them. Yes. And it encourages a good relationship. Because we don't have good relationships with developers. Developers and users are constantly at war. It's like D&D game master versus player. They see themselves as antagonists when the truth is that it's a symbiotic relationship. It is a lot of work. (laughs) It's a lot of work that major companies do. It's a lot of work. Microsoft does this and has Mm -hmm. done this since I was supporting guest. Yeah, I was supporting Microsoft Word desktop updates for a bank pre Y2K. I know I'm old folks and Doesn't look it. I think you know so if you did, it would be okay too. No, I look my age. This is what 46 looks like folks. Um, and I'm trying to think of like another, perm- like another way that this would be where for instance, like you download a free plugin and then the free plugin comes with add-ons that are paid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, that's like, like that the e-commerce of... model. Yeah. Right. Everybody. And I, I, I support that model by the way. Having your your main plugin be free and all the cool features be pay add-ons allows you to do the security updates because nine times out of ten they're going to be on the main plugin, folks. And right. for a long time, Yoast used to have two plugins that mm-hmm. you either had premium or you had free. And I was always telling Yoast, I was like, dude, you got to combine them and just have an add-on for the pro stuff. I do It'll never save you under- miles of work. I do not it, understand the two separate plugins thing. It for that. started yeah. wrong when they it, deactivate the other one, and I'm like. Mm-hmm. So I just get rid it's, of this one now? it's one of those things more? that it was a bad decision in the start and it took and because it gotten so big right. by the time they realized they needed to fix it it took forever to fix it and, and everyone I totally followed suit and, yeah. and thank thankfully you know but it took time but it's it's not an easy answer because it really mm-hmm. all is contextual was say doing anything wrong trying to find a free version of the plugin that she cannot technically legally buy yeah. Without you know I'm, skirting around sanctions, I'm in catch twenty two land. I can't. You are. I can't legally download it, but Tucker's got me. Um, but, however, <laughs> I do. But if to- now if Tucker started reselling it for the exact same price that you could buy it from the original purchasers, and kept doing that and charged you a fee every year for the upgrade, I have a problem mm, with you, that's Tucker. That's a good idea. So yeah, that's that's exactly it. We get we totally get into moral ambiguity land, right? Oh, we'll yeah. sublet. We'll this sublet. Is- sublet. <laughs> This is, yeah, subletting. This is, you're like, I'm not using this plugin. You can use this plugin. You just pay me and I'll keep the license I've got because it's cheaper, but you yeah. can go ahead and pay. Like, I'll sell I you mean, the some vintage places let you transfer license. But that's interesting. Okay, but I want to talk transfer about the, license. That's good. the fact that this is not a clear cut. The yeah. GPL itself is not clear cut, right? Because Oh, the GPL said, is perfectly clear on this. According well, to the GPL, cost, uh, Tucker can do whatever he wants. So the the Nold sites completely GPL compliant. It is literally a mm-hmm. moral and ethical well, dilemma, not in a, a processing one. in a purchasing terms right. issue, which is a different legal issue. It is a legal issue though. Copyright is a separate legal issue to the GPL. Purchasing terms are a separate legal issue. And while the GPL states I can't put restrictions on how you use the plugin. Uh-huh. It certainly means I can sever our relationship. And I mean, if you think about it, the guys that are running these null sites, there are two reasons why they're really sketchy. First of all, once they get caught, the license gets canceled. They have to buy another one with a burner credit card. And this just, you know, goes on and on. That's a lot of work, man. Mm-hmm. And the other and thing is you buy that because I guess that's how they download it. The other thing is that I trust Tucker. 
if he emailed me a copy of a plugin and said, hey, this is the plugin, and I promise it's the real plugin, I trust him. I don't right. trust any a lot of people. Well, that was <laughs> yeah, that MD5 hash better be there. solid. <laughs> this is where this is where my my oh, I was really trusting back then. Uh, oh yeah, we all were. Came in because I was like, oh, yeah. download this file, and then I'm like, I've cleaned off a bunch of computer stokes. If I don't have the version of the file to check, because that's the whole problem. I don't have that well, version of the file. Then how do I mention it's the hashes it for like error? And I was like. Would yeah. I run it through a virus scanner? Like, well, see, what? if you publish the MD5 hash on the plugin zip on your website, then people could check it. I made the well, I, I made have the have zip it? with the no, with the Mac, so it added oh, some well, extra files. Oh, I can't files. upload it now. <laughs> I'm putting it on right. the website for Mika to check. Is that what I heard? <laughs> no, uh, Mika oh, charges okay. five hundred dollars per plugin to review. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the starting price. And it doesn't matter whose plugin it is. Can I have yep. you review other people's plugins and be like, what would I have to change within this plugin for it to be a significant change? Uh, you mean my actual job? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, I actually, uh, sometimes uh, clients have weird requests and we're like, how much of this do we actually change? Does it become a fork or should we make it? Is this plugin safe to use? And I get that's pinged a lot right. with like, Hmm? That's that's a huge dilemma, especially hmm. when you have in the repo, right? Oh, so well, yeah. many plugins, so many versions, yeah. and they're the only re-reviewed on demand. Like yeah. you don't do them manually. Yeah, oh, yeah. but the but, yeah, though with those plugins, like they they are especially because they're free. If they don't have the whole like business mechanism pro yeah. version attached to them, a lot of the times they become abandonware. Right? We've talked they about do. that a lot on this show. So it's mm -hmm. like. The, even I mean, I've clean, you've met users. There are reasons they get abandoned. They, we 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 get these clean files, right? And then it's abandoned. And then we have these we have built off built sites out of a plugin that's like, you know, not yeah. no longer being updated. And you know, security concerns are there, but also just code General modernity, right? It can't yeah. do as much. And then so. To a certain degree, I have with my clients really, I really don't use that. I, I only use free plugins mostly for utility things. Like yeah. if I'm doing, you know, some sort of, I don't know, something that's really sort of a technical level thing, not something that I'm building out their workflow around or that I'm right. building out their site content around. So those I basically at this point, and it's, you know, it's in the thousands of dollars for all of yeah. these clients for their licenses. So individually right they're they're in theory i would yeah. save them and me well not me money but i would save them a lot of money if i had an unlimited license and then just what i most what most people do is they just stick their license in did i just have a you did you had a little thumbs up pop up what well, um like they stick their license into their all their clients uh yeah. you know portals or whatever i can't think of their admins and then they charge them right for their updates or they charge that's yeah. part of their maintenance contract yeah. where they say you know you've got this license for me so it's you know you've got events calendar pro so it's a hundred dollars a month or it's fifty dollars a month right is that different if they gave you an unlimited license and said it's fine to use it on all your clients then yeah that is different that's that's the purchasing agreement that you've made yeah. with them if they say this can only be used on five sites and you use it on 10. Well, no, it's still using it on five. It's more like charging them for, you know, their license. But you're not you. charging. You're not technically charging them. Okay. If you're, <laughs> if you're saying you're charging them for your license, it gets sketchy. But if you say that you're charging them for the work that you're doing of installing and ma maintaining the plugin and their website for them, then yeah, that's just. I'm like, charging you a hundred dollars a month because I, for the, me to click the enable auto updates button and sign. I'm charging a hundred dollars a month for plugin maintenance and security. Yeah. But and I, that's even what, if you don't have to do anything, right? You well, literally. Now you don't. No. I mean, hopefully you're pre-testing for them, but I, I get why we don't. We don't. Staging don't sites know. are great, folks. I don't I don't do anything. Yeah. I'm just like, whatever. Like, it, I've gone full circle from cowboy yeah. coding back. Right? I mean, honestly. <laughs> Living on the corral here. We don't get to have one answer because no situation is the same. Um, mm -hmm. I always used to say this when I was reviewing plugins and somebody said, well, why didn't, you know, are you going to ban this person? for putting in a back door in their plugin. And I said, well, I'm going to look and see if they put in the back door on purpose 
if there's someone who has a history of doing this, mm. if there's someone who has a history of doing other naughty things, everything has to be taken contextually. And while the law is the law for everybody, piracy isn't the same for everybody, you know? It, and it can't, mean? well. Pirate's gonna pirate? Pirate's, user, pirate's gonna pirate. Who's gonna pirate accidentally? <laughs> who gets to define its piracy is the question. No, you. So right. Metallica, gets to decide it's piracy because people were using their music in ways that they didn't, uh, you know, they were giving music away for free. Mm -hmm. And the argument was that while individual piracy is in fact piracy, it's so low scale that giving, you know, Tucker my mixtape of my favorite Metallica songs, that's not a really big deal. But selling it to people starts becoming a deal because now I'm not doing it just to give it away and share with people, but I'm doing it to make a profit off of somebody else's hard work. Um, mm -hmm. And that's where my moral ambiguity starts wait, wait, piling in. on that. One, yeah. somehow Cosper's computer is reading his mind and giving him thumbs up. Huh? I think he's doing them below the camera. Are you? Is that what you're doing? I'm like, why? No. He's just agreeing with you and his computer is sentient and knows that. So that's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then also, uh, I was so distracted by that. I forgot the other point, damn it. Oh, that's not what Napster didn't charge people it was sharing it was file yeah. sharing so it was file sharing and it was the scale of the file sharing that metallica took umbrage with right because that was the whole argument right like yeah. we're not and, charging people for this or whatever right like right that's the whole they're just and sharing their files with digital files with physical files it's it's unless i go to the effort of making you know 150 photocopies and selling them for two bucks i'm not going to make my 152 dollars back <laughs> and <laughs> some and dinner so is, um, it, is it then profit? Is that the line? My line is intent. Yeah, but if intent, I'm, intent, so, is not, intent is, intent is I subjective. Know. I'm looking for unsubjective here. I'm looking for objective. I'm looking for, is there a framework where we're not like, hmm, I have a, like, I, like, here's, here, let me, let me just tell you why. I really <laughs> like to get to that because I have what I like to think of as a fairly strong moral quote, right? Like I have a fairly uh, intense ethical <laughs> principles structure um, and other people have less of a one, right? I'm not judging them for that, but those people get to take advantage of a lot of things. Yes, they do. My lovely moral principles do not allow me to take part in. You know, like sometimes people offer you money and you say, sorry, I can't accept that money because it would be morally compromising. Right. Uh, and yes. others Please don't pay me to like, review your plugins while I was the plugin rep. That was that was not OK. Oh, well, right. Exactly. You're like, I just want to send you this gift card to Amazon just because you're nice. Returned every single one for 10 years. Right. And let me tell you, <laughs> that was a choice that you made. Mm -hmm. That was not a decision that you, I'm assuming, that was not any conversation you had with people. That was not a policy that was written up. No. That was Mika so, being like, I don't want to accept bribes for my work. I'm not doing that. I have a moral code. I mm -hmm. take my job responsibly and it's not for sale. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's me. So there are people and including, and this is part of why you didn't leave for so long, because there's a lot of people who would take happy, happy, happy advantage of that situation. Oh, yeah. Now, in the yeah. world of, you know, we're not, obviously, it's not a limited pie, but in the world of these people and their uh, more relaxed moral code, like I said, get a yeah. lot of advantages. And I am literally disadvantaging myself by yes. having a stronger moral code about something that is highly ambiguous yes and arguments you know legally fine well i mean so many things that are legal are yeah. wrong so, you know obviously that's not even a, a line but like that that's the problem because at a certain point yeah the frustration of doing it to yourself right mm -hmm. like being like oh wow maybe i should just play this game in this world because otherwise i am you know, ostracizing myself and disadvantaging myself, yeah. what I'm bringing to the table. And without, you know, it's just this lost space where you're just yeah. like, it's literally moral code. That's this code. Huh, funny. Um, tell me what to do, Mika. I mean, I can tell you, I can tell you what to do. Okay. If yeah. you are concerned about 
the possibility of being on the NSA's watch list because you bought software from a sanctioned country. Yeah, that's Don't like, buy it nulled either because you are still encouraging that behavior, which is sanctioned in the United States. Oh, I like that you just told me that it's both going to get me in, on the list. I don't want to be both on the they, list. They, could, they absolutely both can get you on the list. I don't now, want to Yeah, Tucker's list. rethinking his <laughs> offer. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I love I'm just putting it on GitHub. She downloads it however she having, feels like it. <laughs> now, right. And, you know, my moral compass says I would give someone personally and say, please don't share this and ask them. And I would only give it to people that I felt shared my same relative moral compass about these things. Uh, if someone I barely know pings me and said, hey, I know this. Uh, I know you have a copy of this. Could you give it to me? And I'd really have to think about it hard. How much do I trust them? Um, <laughs> I have another slide. I'll diff the two versions and give her the deltas. How about oh, that? See, we'll do that. That's <laughs> actually pretty cool. Um, but what if I I'll make you a patch file? You have to figure out how the to use it. The problem with the nulled sites is that they're acting as an intermediary where there is no license agreement to act as such. And I don't mean GPL license. I mean purchase license. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And the other problem is that because they've already demonstrated that they have fewer morals and a different ethical stance than I do, I cannot reliably trust that they haven't messed with the zips. Well, because that's there's no way the, to compare the two. That that's, the that's thing, right? Right? is it even safe? Are you yeah. just giving your money to somebody for null so, null plugins are never safe they, so because they, they they just aren't. There there's right. no other answer to this. They cannot be, safe, be back door. They cannot be proven that they haven't been tampered with. Oh my God. Yeah. It's, it's like, exactly. don't, don't return a bottle of Tylenol that's been opened. Right. Just because I can't tell that the... you didn't lick the ice cream. That's why we have those yeah. seals on our ice cream now, because people would open them up and lick them and put it back. That's why they have that, that line yeah. in the gusset of the underwear. Exactly. That's why they have those things. Don't so return that... your underwear, people. Like... That is the MD, MD5 hash right there. Is, yeah. is you, you, you look at it and you say, you all right, well, these two yeah. are the same. I'm good. So really... Publicizing your MD5 hashes would do a wonder for people if there was also a way that you could verify. Like, hey, did you possibly buy this from a nulled site? Here's the little checker you can run to see if it's valid or not. Somebody yeah. should make that website, please. Yes, uh, please. Someone, yeah, like someone to do that. Can you make it? But <laughs> at the end of the day, there is not an answer. I'm calling today. all my anarchist friends, by the way, with that idea. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a whole subset of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a socialist yeah. anarchist, folks. Um, okay. wait, 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 wait. I know we're going into like way time, but this is just yeah. such a deep conversation that we haven't had in uh, like ever that we should this way over. I can here. always come back. <laughs> How are you an anarchist socialist and you're all over here telling me you're like, it's not, so it's not about copyright law. It's not yeah. even about that. It's literally about moral code, which is different than anarchists have code. moral codes. What on earth makes people think they don't? Well, yeah. that's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's not the same thing. So no. this is about oh, okay. not about capitalism. So it isn't oh. in your mind about profit because I was asking, you know, oh, yeah. is it okay. If so, money? All right. So okay. My, right. my 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 stance on profit is this is mm -hmm. that Prices are inflated irrespective of cost these days. Uh, yeah. CEOs are making billions, and that money is not being passed on down to the people that are actually doing the work. When we're talking they a large tip sometimes for their waitresses. So yeah. right. when we're when we're talking about large corporations, by which I would mean Microsoft, Apple, those things, that's a is very right? different hmm? W P engine. WP Engine Automatic actually would fall under that as well. I just don't um, say that one. My moral compunction to not uh, – there's a whole Jewish thing about your moral compunction, your, your, your inclination to evil and your inclination to good, and your entire life is spent fighting the two of them and trying to force yourself to the inclination to good because it's for the betterment of the world as yourself. We don't think about it as going to heaven. We don't have that whole shtick. It's literally just – be a better person to make this world a better place. From that standpoint, I don't really have a problem with sealing Adobe Photoshop. They charge out the wazoo way more than they should. On the other hand, if I was stealing from, say, who made a, a plugin on her own or a Photoshop app on her own, and I was stealing from her, I'm a great big jerk. Right. And, and that's where my break point is, is that 
I, if you steal from a capitalist, I'm going to turn the other. Yeah, well, I didn't see anything. Yeah, I didn't like, see that person sleeping in their car, even though sleeping in cars is illegal in California. Right. I know the guy who sleeps at the exact same spot near my place every day, and I drop him off food cards because I feel awful for him. He just can't afford a, a, a place to live. If you see somebody... If you see somebody stealing food from the supermarket, no, no you, you didn't. didn't. If you see yeah. somebody stealing diapers, no, you didn't. Oh my God. On the I other hand, you if you I see somebody the cutting off the catalytic converter for a car, yes, you did see that. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's a well, jerk. Exactly. So this is it, this is that same place. It's intent. It's same... Is it intent to harm? Mm. Or or exploit? Or exploit? Or is it an intent to Look, man, you guys charge four hundred dollars yeah. for this plugin. By the way, that is not the largest plugin cost I've ever seen, and no, it wasn't worth it. Um, no, no, I got. There's a story tried. about that guy. I've got it somewhere. In my I had queue. a demo version of the events calendar suite. That, oh boy! That I got a code for as a demo version, and then I had to put my card in, but I wasn't, I wasn't supposed to recharge. And I was like, "Ooh, yeah, that's a big amount of money that that yeah, just charged me for all of that." Ooh, bye -bye. Mm -hmm. They put it back. Yeah. Was uh, would I advocate stealing plugins? No, I would advocate talking to them going, look, man, this price is kind of crazy. Do you have any sort of deals for uh, people that are buying it for use in, you know, uh, teaching or people that are buying it for use in nonprofits? And having deals for people like that is a fantastic way to give to ensure people don't do piracy because people do piracy for three reasons. One, you charge too much. Two, there's no way to get it. That's what's going on with movies right now, is that literally TV shows and movies are being taken off of streaming and you cannot find them. Uh, and the third reason is that they're just evil people. You can't do anything about the third one, but the first two you can. Mm -hmm. uh, if your company is going out of business and you're never going to work on this plugin again, put it up on GitHub. Just be the mensch because you're not making money from it anymore, right? Put it up there. Let somebody else take over. Just mm -hmm. go. If you see a plugin that's closed on WordPress.org and you think, oh, I really love this specific plugin, fork it. It's perfectly legal and it's encouraged. I don't have any forks left. But what? I'm out, out of spoons, forks. man. I'm out of spoons <laughs> and forks at this point. <laughs> like, do them for good reasons. I only reason. have knives left, which is kind of dangerous. I'm a little scared. Oh, boy. <laughs> that went to a place. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, it's just, it's a really accurate metaphor. Oh, Courtney. Can I shed light on force deploying updates to premium plugins and customer support and how to acquire them? Oh That's boy. a whole nother talk. Hey, man. look, we have a whole nother episode to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we literally turned this into two episodes because this is like did. a two-parter. And it's because um, you really can't untangle the two. It, it everything yeah. is quantum entangled when you talk about piracy and licenses mm -hmm. and trademarks and copyright and how far do you go down the rabbit hole? And, yep. you know, I and spent if, 10 years in the rabbit hole. Also, though, you know, if the industry is like turning into a little cesspool and it's like, and maybe we want all of this stuff to collapse, there is a disruptor side of me that has been giving, yeah. get been fed a lot lately. Um, so that part of me is like that little anarchist inside me is like, join our Discord, like growing. <laughs> it, it's good disruption versus bad disruption. If you're disrupting the status quo in order to enact a change for the good of, of the many, like, but wait, sitting on a bus. But mm -hmm. if you're disrupting to make a profit, like Lyft instead of public transportation, those uh -huh. are the differences. Uh -huh. Public transportation is inexpensive and anyone can use it. Lyft requires a credit card and money. Mm -hmm. um, I would also like to say, though, for that first one, I mean, I like your distinction, but on that first bit, uh, there is that new lovely little philosophy called effective altruism, where it's like, yeah. the world oh, that I want, to, <laughs> I just thought I'd whip that out at the end. Uh, the world that I want, you know, is it's for the good of that world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Screw the good of your world. Well, now that, okay, so I come from this from a Jewish standpoint, and I mentioned it earlier that there that there's your your inclination to good and your inclination to evil. Your inclination to good must be for making the world a better place for everyone, not mm. you, but everyone. If, but also, like, that philosophy, followed by uh, the head of Twitter X thing, whatever, that, that guy who I don't like to talk there's about. There's a reason I don't use it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, uh, that philosophy is, 
here's what I believe is the best for everyone, aka mm -hmm. bars and you know self-driving yeah. cars and whatever. Um, and because I believe this, so I am good. doing it for the good. Yeah. And then therefore, um, my insane narcissism is is allowing me to use that exactly. Oh yeah, his justification for narcissism is incredible. Um, yeah. No, that's evil, sorry. <laughs> I, I have no qualms in saying, if you think that your version of the world is the only version that has to exist and everybody else is wrong, your inclination to evil is winning, folks. Mm. Because there's no one true God for everyone. There can't be. The Torah actually says that there are multiple gods. It just says that, you know, ours, as it were, is better. That. And that's the argument to be made. But oh, no, seriously, no. that's what it says. Um, but <laughs> we're just talking about God. There is, and there is no, at the end there's here. no it's one fun. answer for is this piracy bad piracy or is this necessary piracy? Yeah, that's exactly. I think that's the distinction. Mm -hmm. And in Say's piracy. case, right. Her Good original piracy. example of a country that's being sanctioned against and a company that is doing effectively money laundering workarounds in order to get paid, while my heart breaks for the people that are in those situations, no matter what country they be in, no matter what situation, because I know the average Joe has no control over their government, we just don't, mm -hmm. um, it is not worth risking my own personal safety to aid them in that endeavor and risk being audited, which Whatever, is a terrible right? thing, yeah. risk being investigated by the FBI. I I've worked with an FBI honest. investigation. It's a weird thing to do. I worked at a bank for 14 years, folks. I've seen a lot of weird stuff. They don't seem super trusting. They're not. They're really not. I, <laughs> they and they like have no senses of humor. <laughs> Would go don't make that. a joke near the FBI. They're like, I don't think you're taking this seriously. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't. It's chronic. It's a problem. <laughs> but um, is from childhood. There, there can't be one answer because no two <laughs> situations are the same. And in Say's <laughs> case, I would say that you are stealing diapers. I'm stealing diapers. Well, you know, I'm going to turn the other cheek and look the other way because I didn't see someone stealing diapers. Yeah, no one's stealing any diapers here. That, that was my wrap up. I had it. <laughs> Thank you for bringing us to that beautiful conclusion and for this amazing extended episode because you have so much wisdom to bring to this uh, and to the community Anytime. in general. So, so good. Thank you. I've missed getting to chat with you guys. Yeah, yeah so it's good to get out. You will be back, I hope. Please. Sure. Go Tucker, join take us, us home. Go home. join us in our Discord. We'd really appreciate it. And come hang out with us. You can go to wpwatercooler.com slash Discord and you can go find us over there. Here's our outro. See y'all later. Bye. Go over to our website at wpwatercooler.com slash subscribe to subscribe to this content in any way that you want to subscribe it. Subscribe, subscribe to it. You can also hang out with us in our live chat. You can do that over on our website as well as on YouTube. Talk to you all later. You have a good one. Bye-bye.